Today I'm going to talk about simple veins in leaf shapes in cloth stitch. They're often marked like this, just with a straight line down the middle, not with pinholes. On a vertical vein like this, the workers are twisted as they cross this vertical vein. On the horizontal one, which I'll show you later, it's actually the passives that are twisted as they cross the, the line for the vein. This pattern is taken from Barbara Underwood's traditional Bevershire and 20 lessons and I'm just going to set it up just purely to do the leaf, not to work the whole design so that you can see how to do the veins. So I'm going to imagine the two pairs, two plaits coming in from each side and I'm just going to put temporary pins in to form the plaits from. So you can imagine these are coming off the six pair crossings and I'll, I'll just do the plaits so we can see the plaits coming in. And the same on the other side. This is a great little motif, you could put it in an oval paperweight something of that nature and it also enables you to try out the two veins in the one motif. Okay so now we've come to the top and I'm going to cloth stitch them together just to form the top point. And then I have to decide which way I'm going to work first and I think this pinhole on the left is slightly higher than the one on the right so I shall start with this pair and just cloth stitch through to the left, put the pin up and then cloth stitch back. Now on the right hand side there is another plait at that point. This would have been laid in in both directions, this circle on the right to come into the, the stitch there. So I'm just going to make it one plait coming in because again I just don't want to work the motif. So I'm just imagining this coming in. Now when you take in two pairs, generally in Bedfordshire you would take them in as if they were a single. This reduces the bulk and makes less of a bump on the side. Now because this isn't actually a plait I'm going to leave them on that support pin just a little bit longer. If there were a plait obviously you wouldn't have the support pin in. And we continue to work the cloth stitch. We're just going backwards and forwards in cloth stitch, taking in the plaits as they appear until we get to the, the vein or the line on the pattern which indicates the vein. Now drop that down off the temporary support pin. This is the simplest of veins in cloth stitch leaves. Over the coming weeks I shall be filming the other techniques that you can use for veins and they'll be in future videos. I've now got another plait coming in. Now again this would be put in, set in in both directions so you would have a plait to do the crossing and you'd also have the plait coming in here because you actually need those pairs coming into this cloth stitch. So I'm just going to hang them on a temporary support pin again just to use the right hand end of the plait for the cloth stitch and again take it in as one pair. Now I'm getting towards the line and you have to make the decision where you're going to start this vein. And I think there's probably another row after this one before we start the vein. Again, another plait coming in. This will be coming out of this spot here. So this pair will be coming in and this pair will be coming in as well. Or well, the plaits rather, not pairs. 
be two pairs coming in at each of those points. So again take them in as one pair, just work in a cloth stitch as if they were a single pair. And keep checking to have a look to see where the vein is. Now I think actually we can do the vein on the next row. So we want to work out where we're going to put this vein. And we just count up if we've got an even number and in this case we've got an odd number so look at your pairs and look where the passives lie and I think the pair here the extra pair wants to be on the right because the vein is slightly to the left now quite often you can make it symmetrical but it doesn't have to be leaves if depending on the angle of the leaf when you're looking at it the vein may not be in the center so it doesn't matter it being off center gives it a more natural feel so we're at the point here and on the first row i put one twist on the worker pair and then continue to work And then each subsequent row, you can put two or even three if you want a wider gap. Now these veins are quite good if you work in a piece of cloth stitch and you've, you want to put some open space in this cloth stitch. It also replaces pairs, so you've got a big area of cloth stitch. You don't want to add extra pairs for whatever reason. You can put a twisted or uh, a vein in by twisting the workers but remember this has worked on a vertical so the vein must be vertical to work it this manner and the second one I'll show you it must be horizontal it doesn't work so well if you try it on a diagonal it just doesn't work well and there are other methods for doing a diagonal vein these are purely for the vertical I think two twists is quite quite good for that there you can see the vein starting to open up. I'll do a few more rows and you can see what happens. Okay, continue. If you've decided on two twists, continue all the way down the length of the line. And then at the bottom of the line, when you come to the last row, do one twist before closing it. Now here I've actually got a plaque coming in and going straight back out so I'm not actually going to add it this time but if you are working it as a piece obviously the plaque will come in take it in as one pair but leave it out as two so you work one cloth stitch to take it in and two to leave it out it reduces the bulk in the cloth stitch and makes the join a little bit tidier You can see now you've got quite a nice open vein there and this will show up in the cloth stitch when you've taken it off the pillow. Generally the veins are at the widest point on the leaf and as the leaf decreases in size then the vein will finish because again that enables you to use less pairs of bobbins. So it's a useful technique if you're designing lace yourself and want to put less pairs in to make it a little bit more manageable for whatever reason. And there you can see the vein quite nicely. I'm going to leave it at that and move on to the horizontal vein next. Similar sort of thing but you twist in the passes this time. 
So on this leaf we're going to work the vein horizontally as indicated by the line. So I'm going to start at this pin I've already put in and work across five pins to get the, the leaf started. I'm just going to put that first plait as if it's coming in there. The second one you hang over a pin because again you're going to work through this. The next pin has two pairs hung on it. So you put the pin in and hang them open formation, a stride or rainbow fashion. The next one has a plait coming in. I haven't put this plait, but I'm going to put the pin in and hang them on as if that plait's come into there. So that gives me the four pins and then the fifth pin will have a pair added on at the pin. This method gives you the flat start we need on this leaf. So we're going to start from the first pin on the left hand side and cloth stitch through the four pins where we've got pairs hanging on them. Now this is slightly different to how you would work a flat start in books but I'll cover that in another video. So at this point we get to this pin here and we're going to add one pair. And we're going to add that on a temporary support pin because it's not coming from anywhere, we're just going to cloth stitch through it. Now on leaves like this you have a lot of pairs coming into the cloth stitch quite quickly, as you'll see from this pattern. And this is often the case with both of you, you're adding pairs all over the place to get you started. And some people find this quite daunting, but you do get used to it if you just practice a little. Now again at the next pin there is a plait coming in. So I'm just going to hang the two pairs on as if they're coming in, not really from a plait, just for the demonstration purposes of the video. And it's just hanging on a temporary pin, but imagine it's a plait coming in. And again, because it's a plait, I'm going to take them in as a single pair. And I'm just going to work until I get almost to the line. Now this vein needs to be over the line as the last one was the twists are actually going to be over the line rather than actually on it. Again, another two pairs coming in. This pair's coming in all over the place at the moment. Taking them in as one pair. Probably after this row we can then look at putting the vein in. Now one thing that's important to remember with Bedfordshire is a line marking on a, a pattern means around about this pin there is a plait or a leaf or whatever the marking indicates. It doesn't mean this must happen at this pin. It's your lace and if you prefer the leaf or the, the plait to come in at a slightly different pin above or below where it's marked that is perfectly acceptable. Sometimes with where you start a piece you might decide to put it in a slightly different position. So here I'm actually going to do this vein on this next row. Now in Barbara's book it does show this vein as being probably one row further on but I'm going to do it at this point. It's the same, exactly the same. What we have to look at is where how many pairs are actually crossing this line. So here I think is the first pair of passives to cross it. So that one wants two twists on it. And then 
you go along the row twisting all the passives that are crossing the line until you get to the other end and then you look at it again and see which one is the last one to cross it and I think in this case it's probably going to be this one because we want something after the vein and although we have got two more coming in here to fill it up as well so those are the pairs I've twisted all, all the pairs that cross the line twice now you can if you want twist them three times but twice is the general rule and generally does give you enough of a space to be able to see it and then we just cross stitching across the row and this forms your vein I'll do a couple of rows and you'll be able to see the effect I have got to put two more pairs in there so hang two more pairs on as if they're coming off a plait which would be the bottom of the leaf over here Again, take them in as one and pin up and I'm just going to do one more row so we can actually see the vein now at the moment it's looking like that needs to be an extra twist on it there are a lot of pairs in this cloth stitch and it may be that it would have been better with three twists instead of two we shall see just do one more row Sometimes it's a little bit of an experimentation whether you want two or three. Don't be afraid to try it out. See which pref you prefer for your piece of lace. Three does fill the space more so you have to bear this in mind if you've got a lot of pairs in there because the twists take up space. I always encourage people to try things though just because it's always had two twists doesn't necessarily mean that's right for your lace. Everyone's tension is slightly different and if you're using a different thread to what the book states that will also make a difference as well. Now again that vein is quite small but you can actually see the effect of it and that's all this video is showing you how to do it. I hope that's been helpful for you. If you've got any questions, please drop me a message, leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up, and if you subscribe, you'll see more veins coming soon, along with lots of other videos. Thanks for watching.